Hey everybody, this is Sean with Next Wave DV again. We stopped by G Technologies booth and I'm here with Ian. And we were just talking about uh, the new solution that you have for designed specifically for 4K workflow. Yep. Can you uh, go ahead and uh, give us a give us a something about it? Because I just totally had a blank. I'll give you an overview. I'll just let you take over. <laughs> Not a problem at all. All right, <laughs> thank you. Um, all right, so there's a couple different products that we've announced this year at NAB. Okay. We'll start with um, the G Raid in the Studio family. Okay. So we have a new class of products that just has the designation of Studio. Primarily what that means for us is we're really going after the studio user, which means it's got to be faster, more reliable, everything has to be cutting edge. Okay. So on the G-RAID Studio, you know, you'll notice it's got the great sleek design, mm -hmm. just like the new Mac Pro. Yeah, so it's really designed by that, it looks like. to aesthetically fit into that work environment. Okay. okay. Um, but one of the things you'll notice is that we now have drives that are removable and they come out from the top. Okay. One of the things that that allows us to do is, just like the Mac Pro, it makes cooling the drives themselves easier. Okay. Um, so you can get all the air to go in vertically through the drives, keeping everything much cooler, and what does that result in in a student environment? Makes it much quieter. Yeah, you don't have to use a high speed fan in order to cool them. Exactly. The thermal dynamics, so the, yeah. It all helps, aids it. Slow exactly. fan speed. Exactly. Quiet. Okay. Then you go into the Big Brother, same thing. It's got four drives inside. All right. Um, and the important thing to know about the solutions is they all come with enterprise class removable drives. So that's critical because enterprise class drives, they're designed to be running 24-7, right. five years. Right. Okay. And you know, there's a lot of little things inside the drive that a lot of people aren't aware of. So for example, vibration control. So it's really important if you get two drives and anything rotating at 7200 RPM is going to have some amount of vibration. Mm -hmm. They're designed to make sure that when they do vibrate, they don't necessarily oscillate in a frequency that hurt each other, because if it can't read it because it's you know vibrating, right. it's going to skip a, um, an entire Until rotation it can, it's keep before it can read again. Yeah. So again, G Tech takes these things into account when they design their drives and solutions to make sure that when we talk about throughput, it's guaranteed and sustained throughout your entire project. All right. What does this mean to the user? When you press play, if it misses one cycle in one rotation because the vibration wasn't taken into account, right. you're going to drop stuttering. a frame, it's yep. going to stop playback. It's a really big issue. Right. Okay. And that's these are the types of things that we take into account. Now, the other thing inside of them is you'll notice that they've got bigger capacities. So a four bay device now mm -hmm. goes up to 24 terabyte. Okay. We're able to do that by using our helium class product drive. Okay. Okay. Basically, as the name says, instead of oxygen, we've used helium. It yeah. allows the drive to run cooler, All right. and it's going to allow us to get more data per sector on the drive. So it's breakthrough, it's revolutionary, it's all proprietary to HDST, something we're really proud of. But it also allows our users to get other benefits. Because it runs cooler, the fan gets to spin slower. Right. Okay. Right. Keeps the environment cooler, and it draws less power. So from a power consumption standpoint, it's another big advantage. Mm -hmm. Now, you said that there's also enterprise class RAID cards built in as controllers, right? Correct. So that's another big difference. So there are enterprise class RAID controllers in each unit. Okay. And, and how are you interfacing to the uh, to the Mac or to a PC? How are you in, what's your, your pipeline? Yes. So both units have dual port Thunderbolt 2. Okay. Which is what allows us to get like 700 megs per second out of this box in RAID 0. Right. Around 500 megs per second in a, um, in a RAID 5 environment okay. protected. All right. So what does that mean for somebody who wants to do like uncompressed 4K? All you need is two of these boxes, playback in real time. So your 24 terabytes was only in a RAID 0 configuration or a JBOD, right? Oh, you can do either. So you can do JBOD, you can do RAID but it's 0, 40, RAID But 5. it's uh, 24 is the max. Correct. Not RAID 0. Correct. So, of course, RAID 5, you'll have less. One 18 drive. terabytes. Okay. Correct. Right. So you basically lose one drive of capacity. So I'm loving these, uh, these new Studio 4K designed uh, storage solutions. What does the, uh, where do they start with price? Okay, great. So on the G RAID Studio, we're going to be starting at six ninety nine. All right. And on the four bay, we're going to be starting at twenty four ninety nine. Okay. And that includes the drives, like you said, right? Yeah. They both include uh, fully populated uh, drives because G Tech is all about the out of box experience. We literally want the customer to be able to take the unit out of the box, plug it in, and it's out and working. And so you optimize it for those drives specifically, so it's just... Correct. Yeah, right. and like another thing that we're going to do, because time is money for a lot of these customers, they need to be able to go in, pull the drive out, have it working right away, yep. and we inherit the cost on that. So both of them come rated already. Okay. So in the four-bay enclosure, it already comes out of the box in RAID 5, All right. which means you're pulling it out, it's protected. Because the you're build cycle on RAID 5 actually takes time, mm -hmm. we'll do that for you. If you want to switch it to RAID 0 for pure performance, 
So that's very, very fast reformat, yeah. Okay, and then uh, with your previous line, uh, you have some updates, some yeah. new features with that. Can you go through that for us, Yeah, please? absolutely. So last year, we introduced the G-Dock, right. and I'll just give you a quick reminder. So it's a dual drive solution where when the drives are removed from the enclosure, they still work. The key to that is that we've got a, US, or a USB 3 port in the back. Nice. Okay. Of course, you've got the SATA connection for when it goes in the dock. Because inherently, the biggest cost on Thunderbolt is the chipsets and the connectors themselves. Okay. So those costs are put in the dock to give you the speed, where when you want to switch capacity, when you want to add more data, etc., all you need is the media cartridges. So we've expanded on the media cartridges themselves this year. You now have a one terabyte or a 500 gig. All right. Okay, 7200 RPM rotational disk. Right. We've also launched an SSD drive. Okay. Now, one of the things I'm talking to a lot of people about on the show, not all SSD is created equal. All right. You know, 10, 15 years ago, when people didn't really understand 7200 RPM hard drive, 5400, how long can you sustain data rates, you're getting the same thing out of SSD now. Okay. People don't understand that, you know, some are designed to read write 60,000 times. Some are designed for 200,000 rewrites okay. before you start to experience failures and issues. So for us, we designed everything to make sure that for an enterprise class environment customer, this is the drive that they're going to want to use. One terabyte drive, $499. Uh, you know, and on the drive itself over USB 3, you're going to get about 400 megs per second. All right. In the dock over Thunderbolt, mm -hmm. it's a bit of a bigger pipe, less overhead, etc. You're going to get 480 megs per second out of a single SSD. Okay, and then are, you're able to do RAID configurations with those two? Yep, you can also do JBOD, RAID 1, or RAID 0. Okay. So if you really want to put the two drives together and get a lot of speed out of them, you could do a RAID 0 environment. So you could basically choose that as a dock and go ahead and back up on set, and then just come and plug it in and start editing and working That's for it. Right. That. Yeah, so again, you know, the little things that we think of. Um, we've also got an area in the back for labeling. So, okay. if, in other words, if you're going to raid two drives together, you pull them out, you want to keep them Make as pairs. Make sure they stay. Yeah. Exactly. We've got rooms for labeling, etc. All right. And keep all your drives paired together. Sweet. That's pretty awesome. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, anything else we want to talk about? And, yeah, you've got the larger four bays here. Yeah. Um, yeah. What? So, basically, what we're showing here is there's a lot of people that are trying to strategize today about their migration path okay. from their existing Mac Pro into the new Mac Pro. Okay. And one of the things that they're struggling with is some of the old technologies like mini SAS. Mm -hmm. They used to require car or they require cards, etc. The old Mac Pro had room for it. The new Mac Pro does does not. Yeah. Okay. So again, we look at these customers. We make sure that they were uh, future proofing a lot of their product. So if you have an existing ES Pro, what we're showing here is a Magma box which has uh, an ES card in, or uh, sorry, an ES Pro card inside. So it's got a mini SAS card inside, allowing you to still access the SAS portion of the ES Pro, but Thunderbolt connectivity to your new Mac Pro. So if you right. have existing ES Pros, we wanted to make sure that our customers were future-proofed. You can still access and get unbelievable performance, mini SAS, you know, about 1.2 gigabit, um, connecting into Thunderbolt 2. All right, now with uh, 4K becoming uh, much more in the limelight here, uh, going from HD, people are still probably using their old practices for uh, storage. Uh, can you just run me through like uh, your best practices for you know running into 4K in that workflow and yeah. the solutions you have for that? Absolutely. So, I mean, 4K is obviously a really big deal. From the monitors being able to display 4K resolutions to the throughput and the cameras catching everything, you really want to make sure that you plan out your 4K workflow. So for some customers doing heavy compositing, a lot of animation, etc., you got to make sure that you can do uncompressed 4K. And remember, yeah. you know, we're at the point now where uncompressed 4K, we're pushing about 900 megs per second. That's one of the reasons Thunderbolt 2 is so great. You have the bandwidth to be able to really play back in real time 4K uncompressed. Now, for a lot of people, it's not a big issue. You can go into a ProRes, you can go into some kind of compression algorithm, right. but you want to make sure you know if it's two to one, you know, 450 megs per second, you might need multiple streams, et cetera. So step one, really plan and know what type of 4K you're going to be working with. Once you know that, you can start deciding on the different products with the different throughputs that each product can supply you. Okay. Right. So is it required to just transfer the data really quickly? We have products like the G Drive Pro. You'll be able to transfer 480 megs per second with a four terabyte drive. Super, super fast. Yep. If you want to play back, you start looking at things like, you know, either the G Speed Studio, or sorry, the G Speed Studio or the G Raid Studio. Now, why is it so important to look at the drives inside and what the enclosure can actually do? Okay. There's a lot of things that happen inside the guts of the unit that people don't take into account. 
enterprise class drives is a great example. Yep. You want to make sure that these things are designed to really be pounded on. There's a big difference between you know, a home computer that has a hard drive, or maybe you play some video games, right. it's on for an hour or two a day, uh, you know, and maybe you got some uh, photos stored. Compared to something that's designed to be running 24-7, over five years, always on environments. So if you're working with four uncompressed 4K, you know, you got the high bandwidth, you, like around 900 right. megabits per second. Yep. So you said you can daisy chain these cut together in order to get that uh, throughput, right? Yeah, throughput. that's right. So one unit will give you a full 700 megs per second. So if you're working in a compressed environment, yep. not a problem at all in a single unit. But that's one of the beauties about being able to daisy chain Thunderbolt and Thunderbolt 2 technology. We have two Thunderbolt 2 ports in the back. And again, you always want to make sure you have two ports, yep. okay? Because you'll be able to daisy chain multiple units and then use them together to give you even higher performance. All right. So two of these units is basically saturating a single Thunderbolt 2 um, pipe. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for your time, Ian. We really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. It. Thank you for having us. We really right. appreciate it. Have a good it. show. Special thanks to our sponsors for making our NAB coverage possible.